Hello students, welcome to today's lecture. Today we are going to begin chapter 9 of your business studies book. The name of the chapter is Small Business and Entrepreneurship. It's a very very interesting chapter students. You know why? Because in this chapter we are going to learn about small businesses and India can easily be called the nation of small businesses. In India, we have numerous small businesses in different different sectors and activities spread and scattered throughout the country. A huge number of people are engaged directly or indirectly in these small businesses. We all see so many small small business setups be it in the form of shops or small factories or other ventures all around us. So in India, it is not small. Although we call it small business, it is a big business in India. So that's what we're going to understand. Why we call them small business? What is the criteria? How important these businesses are for a country, especially for a country like ours? Then in the second part of the chapter, we will learn about a very interesting and a very popular term of today, which is entrepreneurship. So let us begin this interesting chapter and try and understand what small businesses are. You know, as I've said, small businesses occupy a very strong dominant position in Indian industries because they have a huge number of people engaged in them. In India, we sometimes call them with different, different names. We can call them small scale industries. We can even call them village and small scale industries. They are further subdivided into several subgroups as well, such as handlooms, handicrafts, coir, sericulture, khadi and village industries, small scale, and power looms. So there are different subcategorizations. Most of these industries in India, which fall under the small criteria, they are traditional, which means they do not use too much of technology, they are still dependent upon manual labor. Some of them are modern, which means they do use modern technologies. Now, if we want to understand what small business actually means or what kind of business can actually be called small business, we have to have certain yardstick, certain measure or certain criteria on the basis of which we can segregate small and large or even medium businesses. There can be several of such criteria such as total investment or investment in assets or number of people involved, there can be several criteria. On the basis of the criteria of investment in plant and machinery, businesses in India can be categorized into small, medium and large. If we go by the definition used by the government of India to describe small industries, it is based on the investment in plant and machinery. Therefore, we can say that the categorization of small industries is based on the amount of investment which is made in plant and machinery in their respective industries. This measure is important, this criteria is important. Why? Because it keeps into mind the socio-economic environment in India, where capital is scarce and labor is abundant. So in India, where capital is limited and labor is abundant, it is important to see what investment does a industry, does an industry or a company make in its plant and machinery. Apart from making a segregation or apart from making categories, it is also very important to take a look at the problems, to take a look at the needs or the requirements of these industries. So to do all this, to categorize industries, to look into their problems, to help them, to support them, to create an environment for them, in 2006, the Indian government implemented an act, particularly for small scale sector in India. The act was called Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises Development Act, MSMED Act. Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises Development Act 2006. Through this act, the government tries to create a conducive environment for such industries to help them, support them, provide them with different sorts of support to 
resolve their problems and first of all to categorize industries into different criteria. So, according to the act, the small sector has been subdivided into micro, small and medium sector or enterprises. Now, let us take a look at how do we identify which one is a micro industry, which one is a small industry and which one is a medium industry. But before doing that, first of all we have to understand and remember that industries are first of all broadly put into two categories, manufacturing and service. So, while identifying them as micro, small or medium, we have to first look at whether they are into manufacturing business or they are into service business. If they are into manufacturing business, then an enterprise in which the investment in plant and machinery does not exceed 25 lakh, remember investment should not exceed 25 lakh, then that industry would be called a micro industry or a micro enterprise. An industry or an enterprise in which investment is more than 25 lakh but does not exceed 5 crore rupees. So, from 25 lakh rupees to 5 crore rupees, those enterprises which fall within this criteria, within this investment limit are called small and then those in which the investment is more than 5 crores but less than 10 crores are called medium enterprises. So, under the manufacturing segment, if the investment in plant and machinery is less than 25 lakh, then it is a micro enterprise. If it is more than 25 but less than 5 crore, then it is a small enterprise. And if the investment is more than 5 crore rupees but less than 10 crore, then it is a medium enterprise. Similarly, in the service segment also, there is a categorization. In the service segment, an enterprise with less than 10 lakh rupees of investment is a micro enterprise. An enterprise with more than 10 lakh but less than 2 crore rupees of investment is a small enterprise. While an enterprise with more than 2 crore rupees but less than 5 crore rupees is a medium enterprise. Categorizing industries into these subcategories is important because then it helps us to create policies to create solutions pertaining to these different enterprises based on their specific needs and their specific features. That is why this categorization was done. So, since so much is being done for such businesses, they must be really important, isn't it? Why are they important? Let us talk about some really astonishing facts, some really important facts which will show us how important small businesses are particularly in a country like India. First of all, small industries in India account for 95 percent of the industrial units in India. This is a staggering figure. What it says is that out of the total industrial units, total number of factories in India, 95 percent are under the small industry segment. This is such a huge number, isn't it? Almost all of Indian industry is under the small sector. Secondly, small industries are the second largest employers of human resources after agriculture. So, if we keep agriculture aside, then out of all the industries, small sector is the largest employer in the country. Thirdly, small industries in our country supply an enormous variety of products from mass consumption goods to ready-made garments to stationery to soaps, detergents, utensils, leather, plastic, rubber goods, the list goes on. They supply an enormous number and variety of goods in the country. Next, they also enjoy the advantage of low cost of production since they are basically using labor intensive technique. So, the cost of production in such industries is low because of which they provide a platform for many people to earn a livelihood by setting up such industries. Next is a very important point. Small industries in India really help and contribute to the balanced development of the country. You know why? Because big industries, the large setups, they only get established in the big cities or towns because they require such sort of land and other requirements. 
they usually do not go deeper into the remote areas of the country or to the villages of the country. While small industries can be set up easily at any location. As a result, they are widespread. They are available even in small villages or small towns. As a result, they are providing employment, they are providing production, they are helping in the GDP or they are helping in the income of that particular area or the particular region or the people of that region due to which those areas or those regions which would otherwise be deprived of industrial development do get a chance to develop industrially which helps them to come somewhat closer to the development which is taking place in the other cities or other big states of the country. In this way, these industries help in a balanced development of the country. Also, we have to remember the small industries provide an ample opportunity for entrepreneurship, which means being a low-cost business, being something that can be set up anywhere, it provides an opportunity to people to set up their own businesses, to, to set up their own enterprises and utilize their skills and talents. It helps people become entrepreneurs, helps them become businessmen, businesswomen. So this is how small industries help the entire Indian economy and not just the economy but even each and every individual who is somehow related to this particular sector. But while on one hand this industry is so important, at the same time this industry has its fair share of problems. It has a lot of problems which really need to be addressed because it is a very important industry and if the problems that this industry is facing are not taken care of, then this will be problematic to this huge number of people who are working in this particular sector. Let us try and understand some of the problems that this industry is facing right now. The first and the foremost problem that these people face is the problem of finance. Even though the um, investment needed in these industries is small comparatively, yet there is an investment required. Even if an industrialist sets up a small industry initially by arranging investment and finance somehow, later on in the later stages of production when funds are required, they find it really difficult to arrange funds. Due to lack of assets due to lack of other documentation, these people, these industries are usually not entertained by agencies such as commercial banks for giving loans, which really leaves them in trouble when it comes to arranging finance. Secondly, raw materials are also a tough task for these industries. Being small industries, these industries have a lower or lesser bargaining power. They cannot bargain that strongly with the suppliers of the raw materials due to which they sometimes face the problem of arranging good quantity and quality of raw materials. Third and a very important and common problem is the lack of managerial skills. Since these industries are set up by local people, you know, they, they may not have a formal knowledge or training of how to manage a business, this really creates a hindrance in the growth of such industries. Lack of managerial skills prevents them from making innovations, from you know handling situations, taking care of problems that their units are facing, which in the long run becomes problematic for the growth of such industries. Similarly, lack of funds, lack of knowledge, etc. creates a problem of marketing as well. How many of us know of a company, know of an industrial unit which is operating at a small level and serving us with several goods. We, do, we hardly would know the name of such a small industry even if we are using its product because these industries do not spend or they do not have the money to spend on marketing. They cannot conduct in-depth research. So lack of marketing not only you know, creates a problem because it prevents them from reaching to the people but it also creates a problem for the fact that they cannot conduct research. With the lack of research, they cannot deliver products which are actually 
demanded by people. So lack of marketing is a big problem for these people. Due to all of this, lack of finance, raw material and lack of marketing or research, another problem comes up, the problem of quality. Usually it is seen that the quality of products that these enterprises offer is not what we would expect or not what consumers would happily go for. The quality could be better but they cannot because they do not have those kind of resources. Similarly, lack of technology creates a hindrance for them and finally one of the biggest challenges these days for these industries is the global competition. With big companies, MNCs and everything coming up in almost every product segment, it is becoming increasingly difficult for the small businesses to compete with their products against these giants. That is why it is important for the government to provide assistance to these small units and to save the livelihood of so many people in the country. This is why the government has taken and it keeps on taking several measures and steps for assisting, helping and making uh, the development possible for these industries. Now we will talk about some of these steps which have been taken by the government. The first and the most important thing that we should remember is the setting up of NABARD. NABARD or the National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development was set up in 1982. Its objective was to promote integrated rural development. Therefore, while it focuses heavily on agriculture, it also supports small industries, cottage and village industries, rural artisans in the rural areas using credit and non-credit approaches which means it provides credit facilities to them it also supports them through several non-credit counseling consultancy training etc sort of services so they are a big support system for industries in rural areas it was set up in the 1982 apart from the nabad National Small Industries Corporation, NSIC, was also set up. It was set up way back in 1955 with a view to promote, aid and foster the growth of small businesses in the country. NSIC primarily focuses on the commercial aspect of these industries. It helps in arranging indigenous as well as imported machines on easy higher purchase terms for these industries, which means if the small industries require machines, whether local or indigenous or imported machines, NSIC helps them in acquiring such machines, especially on easy higher purchase or installment terms. It helps the industries to procure, supply and distribute indigenous and imported raw materials as well. It helps in exporting the products of small businesses. It also provides them several mentoring and advisory services. NSICs, that's why are very important. It is a national level agency. Under the NSIC, several district industrial centers were also set up. These centers, as we call them DICs, were launched on 1st May 1978 with a view to promoting an integrated administrative framework at the district level because not everyone can reach at the national level to seek help. India is a huge country. People in the remote areas, villages and small towns need support at the local level. So to provide them with that administrative support, district industrial centers were set up in the districts of the country. These centers look at the problems of industrialization in the district in a very composite manner. They, fun they perform a lot of functions. That's why we say they perform a composite number of functions. They identify suitable schemes that can benefit the industries in their district. They help those industries in preparing feasibility reports. They help them in arranging funds, in arranging machinery, equipment, raw materials, etc. So what NSIC does at the national level, the DICs do similar job at the district level. Apart from the DICs, Rural and Women Entrepreneurship Development Program is also a very important program that looks at rural development, particularly of the women. It helps women and rural people generally 
in acquiring skills in acquiring capacities that would help them to become entrepreneurs and set up their own enterprises apart from this there is another very interesting scheme which is called the sphurti scheme or the scheme of fund for regeneration of traditional industries s f u r t i scheme of fund for regeneration of traditional industries this scheme was launched to make the traditional industries more productive and competitive and to facilitate their sustainable development this was set up in 2005 the main objectives of the scheme are as follows number one to develop clusters of traditional industries in various parts of the country so that in clusters or in groups they can perform strongly secondly to develop innovative and traditional skills improve technologies encourage public private partnerships to develop their market intelligence etc so that they can become more competitive third to create a sustained employment opportunity for people in traditional industries sphurti scheme has been very popular ever since it was launched among the traditional industries in the country so students in today's class we saw how small scale industries are categorized in a country their entire concept is really interesting that's why their categorization their functioning their importance everything makes a lot of sense for people in india and as students of business studies you should also understand how important they are in the business field in the country they provide employment they provide products they provide sustenance to a lot of people in the country that's why the government has also been taking a lot of steps regularly for their development and survival as for the exams it is very important for you to remember the schemes that the government has been running for the efficient functioning and development of these industries when, when we come in the next class we will touch upon the second segment of the chapter which talks about entrepreneurship entrepreneurship is related to small businesses because we've seen that small businesses promote entrepreneurial spirit in the people usually when businesses start they start as small businesses and when people or somebody takes up the risk and takes up this initiative of starting up a business that person is called an entrepreneur and his activities his setup is basically called an entrepreneurship venture so we will understand what this heavy word means how it has become so important and how it has become the talk of the day in the next class as for today please try and remember small scale industries their categorization their importance and the schemes being done by the government i hope you were able to understand all of this thoroughly this was it from today's class thank you